Welcome to another episode of Pet Pals. I'm Bethany Davidson, the Humane Educator here at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. Um, again, this week we are low on dogs, which is a great thing for us. Um, many of the dogs on our adoption floor are either full on applications or they're already scheduled for adoption. But we do have a couple um, that still have some application space. And the first of those over here with Tammy is Killian. And he is a, a one and a half year old Siberian Husky. Um, we do have some restrictions on Killian and um, who can adopt him um, based on um, his personality, his demeanor, his activity level, things like that. Um, we do want someone who has Husky experience. Huskies can be hard to train um, because uh, they can be a, a little stubborn, if you will. Um, they have some quirks, so we want to make sure that because this is his second stay with us, we're finding him a home um, that can handle all of the Husky behaviors, um, has a knowledge of um, the types of things that he's going to do, um, so they can provide proper care for him. Um, also, we are looking for um, a home that either has older children or adults only um, for Killian. Um, some of those things um, can be a little bit negotiable, but we're definitely looking for um, kids at least um, over the age of 12 um, is usually what we mean when we say older children or adult home only. Um, Killian could benefit from a uh, couple of good baths, <laughs> um, and he could also benefit from a little bit of a diet. Um, most of us probably could. Um, so um, he's a Husky, so he, he has a high activity level, just getting him out, um, exercising him a little bit more, running around. If you had a fenced in yard, that would be great. Um, those types of things. Um, and just really monitoring his food intake and measuring out his food and not giving him access to um, a bunch of different stuff, kind of monitoring the table scraps, those types of things. Um, Jaden um, was his name when he was here before, um, but his new name is Killian, um, and he came to us because his owner was sick. So it's not really any fault of his own. Um, you know, things like that happen. Um, right now we're seeing a lot of health of the owner as a reason why animals are returning to the shelter or being um, brought to the shelter for the first time. Um, our goal is just to find him another suitable home. Um, because he is a, a young dog, um, an adult, um, he would be going home for an adoption fee of $92.50 that covers all the medical care that we'll provide for him um, as well as his room and board while he's here. If you are interested in Killian and you do have that required Husky experience, uh, you can stop in and visit with him here at the shelter. Our address is 1832 Rosemont Avenue. Our next guest is much younger and uh, full of energy. This is Jackson. He's about seven months old. He is a tree walker uh, hound mix, and he's a, a handsome guy. He's tricolor, um, but as you can see, he has got a lot of energy. Um, he's just a goofy hound, and he needs um, somebody who's going to be really willing to work with him, um, so teach him some good manners. He has some things. He does know sit, but he needs to learn like polite greetings. It's not really uh, nice to jump up on people. It's not sit. nice to put our mouth on people. Um, so he just needs someone who's going to provide him with that consistency and really work with him um, so that he can be a great dog. Another thing that's important to understand when you're um, making a hound part of your family is that um, they're bred to sniff things out. And um, when hounds get their nose on a scent, um, they, that, they kind of have a one track mind. Um, so um, making sure that they're always kind of secure um, because you don't want them to you know, get a hold of a scent and then you know, jump out of your fence or um, you know, make sure that you have a way to contain them so that you know, they're on leash, they're on a harness, um, those types of things. We're gonna be taking Jackson out to a couple of events and we're gonna be using a freedom harness for him. Um, which means that it has a clip on the front. Usually traditional harnesses have the clip on the back. Um, so that helps with the, the, the polite walking because if they pull too much, um, then it kind of pulls them sideways. They don't like that feeling. So then they learn to, to walk politely next to you and, and not pull. Um, that's just one of the many things that Jackson needs to learn. Um, there are a lot of books out there. There are a lot of local trainers um, that can help you figure out you know, how you want to work with him. But it is important when you're um, choosing a trainer for your dog to really look at their philosophy and make sure that it's something that coincides with how you want to um, be working with your dog so that um, they're not doing something that you're not okay with. Um, 
So it, it's not just an easy decision, it's something that you should put a little time into. Um, you should always be researching not just the trainers that you're using, but the, the breeds that you're thinking about adopting, um, because hounds have some special kind of quirks as well. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're prepared to take on all of that. Um, they do the barking, the bellowing, those types of things, the baying, excuse me. Um, so um, you wanna make sure that you're, you're ready to have that kind of going on in your house. Um, but if you think that um, Jackson here is going to make a great addition to your family and you have the, the time to devote to properly training him, um, you can stop in and visit him here at the shelter. We are open six days a week, Monday through Saturday. Uh, our adoption fee for puppies, that's any dog under a year old, um, is $150. This guy is Harley and he is two and a half years old um, and he is one of our shy dogs. Um, <laughs> just because they're big doesn't mean that they, they aren't shy. Um, he definitely is. He is a very gorgeous Doberman mix. He weighs in at 89.9 pounds. So um, he is definitely a big guy and he was previously owned. He was only in the home for a month um, and he didn't really enjoy um, being around a small child. Um, so they brought him to us so that we could find him a more suitable home. Um, given his history that we are aware of, um, we are saying that he needs to go to a home where the children are at least 13 years of age or up, or an adult home only situation. Um, we are also using our puppy process um, to find him a home, which means that we're gonna ask you more questions in our application. We're gonna take more applications just because we wanna make sure that we do find the right home for this guy. Um, we are also um, not requiring Doberman experience, but it's um, Doberman experience is highly preferred um, because he is a big dog. You want to make sure that you understand the breed and their special needs, um, the needs of just any big dog, really. Um, but he also has the oh, thank you. He has the the added um, thing going for him that he's very shy. He's very cautious. He's going to need somebody. Um, who's going to work to socialize him. As you can see, he's very calm, but he's also a little unsure of, of his surroundings and things like that. Um, when you're you know, in the kennel environment, um, he definitely shows that he's a little shy. Um, he's very cautious. Um, you know, um, he has no reaction to other dogs, but um, he, he's easy to walk. He pulls a little bit. Um, he's got a high food drive, which is also something that you want to take into consideration. Um, unable to test with toys, but he loves to, to, to be petted and things like that. Um, it says from his previous owners that he is afraid of loud noises. Um, he likes to chew on blankets, um, which a lot of dogs do. Um, but the afraid of loud noises can be a part of why he doesn't really get along with um, younger children because they do a lot of fast movements and he's a shy guy and they make a lot of noise. They have toys, toys that make a lot of noise. Um, so we're just trying to find the best home for this guy so that he's going to be in a forever home. He's not going to be bouncing around um, to another home um, in his life. So if you um, think that you have what it takes to be the best owner for um, gentle giant Harley here, um, you can again stop in and visit him here at the shelter. Uh, our hours where the kennels are open are Monday, Tuesday, and Friday from 10 to 5, Wednesday and Thursday from 12 to 8, and Saturdays from 10 to 4. While our dog population is relatively low, our rabbit population has increased recently. Um, there are about five or six rabbits on our adoption floor right now. Um, Jessica here is one of those rabbits. She's um, a rabbit that came to us as a stray, so we don't know a lot about her. We're still learning about her. Um, she is about two to three years old. Um, she is an American uh, rabbit mix, and she is um, one of the most mellow rabbits that we have on the floor. Um, she's pretty quiet. She just kind of hangs out. Um, she likes to be petted and have, you know, interaction and, and affection from our volunteers. She's going to make a great pet. Um, and I know I say this all the time, but it is really important to do your research when you're taking on a rabbit um, because they do require um, specialized care. Um, a lot of people have rabbits that kind of roam around their house as a cat would because um, rabbits will use their litter box. But before you're doing that, you need to make sure that you bunny proof your house because 
uh, rabbits will chew through things, including um, your electrical wires, your TV cables, and all of those things. And not only can it be expensive to replace, it can be a fire hazard in your, in your home. So you want to make sure you're prepared for that. Um, they have special dietary needs. Um, they need their hay every day. They need their veggies. They need their pellets. Um, so they have a lot of things that they require. Um, these guys, um, are house rabbits. They're bred to be kind of indoor pets um, that get you know love and affection from a family. Um, they do like to have outside playtime, but you're not going to live. They they shouldn't be living in a hutch outside all the time. Um, a lot of people use little exercise pens. Commonly, um, people buy them for puppies, um, and that's where rabbits tend to spend most of their day in kind of a space that. Um, the family uses frequently so that they can have a lot of socialization time. They need time to exercise. Um, and the more you handle your rabbit, the more comfortable with handling they'll be, the more um, willing to be um, held and, and played with they will be. Um, just like any animal, in addition to their physical stimulation, they also need that mental stimulation. Um, so you just really want to make sure that you're doing, again, all of the research. House Rabbit Society is a great resource if you're looking to find out more information about um, rabbits and, and owning one and properly caring for one. Our rabbits are uh, spayed and neutered before they leave, um, and our adoption fee for all of our rabbits is $50. We hope that you'll uh, come back after the break where we're going to introduce you to the cats that are uh, looking for forever homes here at Animal Control. Our cat population is starting to rise. Um, we want to make sure that we're um, looking to find forever homes for all of these guys. Frederick County Health Department's On The Mark Adolescent Clubhouse and Sober Activity Center is a safe community-based clubhouse which provides a starting point or continuing care link for peers supporting one another through the process of recovery. Membership is free and open to youth from ages 12 to 17 who are in treatment for substance abuse or are struggling in this area or who have completed a related program. The clubhouse offers fun and sober games homework help, skills building, and many other activities. Located in the health department at 350 Montevue Lane in Frederick, Maryland, the clubhouse is open Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 7 p.m. and Saturdays from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. To learn more, call 301-600-1126 or visit frederickcountymd.gov on the mark. Please also like us on Facebook at On The Mark Clubhouse. Welcome back. We are starting to get kittens in um, to the shelter. Um, kitten season has officially uh, begun and they're making their way back from foster care and uh, they're on the adoption floor. However, um, there are a lot of older cats that still need loving homes. A lot of people come in and they really want those kittens and then the cats like Katniss uh, kind of get overlooked. And we want to showcase some of those older cats today. Uh, not necessarily seniors, just cats that are older than kittens. They're a year old, two years old, um, and then in the case of Katniss, nine years old. All of these guys are going to make wonderful pets, um, but sometimes the the cute and cuteness and the novelty of kittens um, makes their stays a little bit longer. Um, so we just want to make people aware that they are here, and there are lots of benefits to adopting an older cat. Um, Katniss is a domestic short hair. She's a tabby or a torby, excuse me, um, which means she has tortoise shell coloring but tabby cat stripes. Um, she's nine years old. She's previously owned. She is a little bit overweight, which is kind of an obvious statement. Um, but older cats, um, they don't require so much of your time. Um, they're more independent. Um, they're more fixated in their personality. So you definitely know what you're going to get. 
um, whereas kittens are still developing. So you could get a kitten that wants to cuddle with you or you could get a kitten that doesn't want to cuddle with you at all and never wants to be picked up. Um, it kind of just stays off to itself. When you're getting an older cat, they are who they are. So you don't have to worry about being kind of disappointed when the personality doesn't live up to what uh, you thought it was going to be. Um, they tend to have lived in homes already, so they know things like only scratch on your scratching posts. They know things like don't jump on the counter. Um, they're really good with their litter box. Um, all of those types of important things that a lot of owners are really looking for. Um, they're going to be um, not, do, not doing as much late night play. They're not going to be um, jumping all over your furniture, climbing your curtains. Um, so there's a lot of benefits to that. Um, and they are so sweet. Um, as you can see, Katniss is perfectly content um, sitting there on Tammy's lap. She's a little nervous about what's going on, kind of being very vigilant, um, but she's not trying to necessarily escape. She's not showing any real signs of distress. Um, so hopefully she'll acclimate well into a new uh, home environment. She is color coded as orange, which means she's just an average cat. Um, she kind of wants to cuddle and play when she wants to cuddle and play, and she wants to be on her own when she wants to be on her own, um, which is part of why a lot of people really uh, love cats. If you are interested in making uh, Katniss part of your family, you can stop in and visit with her at the shelter. Um, as an added benefit and an added uh, enticement to um, get people to think about adopting senior cats, and dogs for that matter, all of our senior animals go home with a discount. So because she's between the ages of five and nine, she would go home for the adoption fee of uh, $77.50 instead of the normal $97.50. Our next guest is Ivy, and she's one of the hidden gems at the shelter. And I say that because um, while she absolutely adores attention, she doesn't really seek it out. Um, and she spends most of her day relaxing underneath her hammock. <laughs> um, she kind of keeps to herself a little bit, and unless you are really looking for her, she's pretty easy to miss. Um, but if you're looking for a cat that's just gonna um, wanna hang out with you and be quiet and calm and love what's going on right now, being petted and cuddled, you might wanna try to look for Ivy. Um, she, um, as soon as you open her cage, even if you've not spent a great deal of time with her, you open it, you lift the little um, hammock door thing up, and there she is, and you reach your hand in and you start to pet her, and she immediately starts to kind of roll around and show you her belly and show you that she's comfortable with you and start purring and um, nuzzling into you and showing you where she wants to be petted. Um, she's just really uh, an affectionate, girl and she while she's not a senior she is one of the you know adult cats on the adoption floor she's about four years old so this is how ivy's gonna be um she is a little bit shy in that you know she um the loud noises kind of a little uncomfortable here in the shelter environment where there's a lot going on she does kind of try to um, hide and keep a little bit to herself but i think once she's um kind of comfortable in a home, she'll open up a little bit more and she'll just be, you know, truly affectionate all the time. Um, that being said, when new people come over, um, she might not want to be the uh, greeter cat. She might want to kind of hang out in a safe space for her, um, but she's just a fantastic cat that keeps getting overlooked. Um, she's been with us uh, since mid-April and um, you know, despite the fact that she's got a great personality, she's a beautiful cat and she has the softest fur, um, she's still hanging out here. So we wanted to showcase her today to, to maybe um, help her be seen in a new light so that people will come and say, you know, hey, can I, can I learn a little bit more about Ivy? Um, if you were interested in um, making her part of your family, um, the first step is always to stop in and do a, you know, read their paperwork and do a visit and see if um, it is actually going to be a good fit for you. Um, there are our processes on our Facebook page, so you can kind of get an idea of how the whole thing works. Um, then we also have those brochures here so that you can figure that out as you're walking through the shelter. Um, if you want to stop by and take a look, our address is 1832 Rosemont Avenue. It's hard to believe that this gorgeous girl came to us as a stray. This is River, and she is a Blue Point Siamese mix. Um, she is 
gorgeous. Um, it's it's a, a miracle almost that she hasn't been snatched up already. Um, she's in a cage where it's kind of hard to see her, although it's still very easy to hear her um, because she does have that typical Siamese um, chattiness and that typical Siamese kind of meow that she's got going for her. Um, she is also front to Claude. Um, she is one of uh, two cats that are front to Claude on the adoption floor right now. We do not advocate uh, decline. However, if that's something that you're interested in, um, we would suggest that you adopt a cat that's already declawed so that we're not doing that to another cat. Um, there can be a lot of different reactions to um, declawing for a cat. It is an amputation of um, their digits. It's not just trimming their claws. So you wanna make sure that you're really doing the research and understanding what that process is um, before you make uh, a decision that you can't go back and change. Uh, River seems to be relatively unaffected, um, but because she doesn't have that primary method of defense, it is incredibly important that she be an indoor-only cat. Um, she can't climb trees as well. Um, she can't fight off any types of predators. So you want to make sure that you're keeping her safe because she doesn't have all the things that she needs to keep herself safe. Um, she has those gorgeous blue eyes. Um, they are uh, mesmerizing almost. And she is just, she's super soft. Um, she's very social. She's just gonna make a great companion cat. Um, but before she can be a great companion cat, someone has to come and spot her here at the shelter. If you're interested in River, our Siamese mix, uh, you wanna stop in and visit with her here at the shelter. Because the Siamese cats typically go very quickly, if you wanna call before you make the trip into the shelter and find out what her application status is, you are welcome to do that. Our phone number here at the shelter is 301-600-1546. Continuing with our uh, senior cats, we have Moon Pie, and Moon Pie has a lot to say. She, uh, she's a big girl and doesn't really fit well into carriers, so she got carried out here, and she wasn't sure how she felt about that. Um, a lot of times, the cats that are really large um, don't enjoy being carried and held because it's uncomfortable for them. Um, so take that into consideration if you were to make Moon Pie part of your family. Um, she likes to kind of sit on people and be, she loves attention. Um, but um, just, you know, getting used to the fact that she's not going to be a cat that you're going to be able to pick up and kind of carry around the house and, and stuff like that. Moon Pie is a gorgeous uh, gray tabby with white. She's about eight years old um, and she is a little overweight. <laughs> I think she's the biggest cat in the shelter right now at 19 pounds, nine ounces. Um, we just had some chihuahuas go home that weighed less than that. So um, she is a big girl, but um, she is going to make someone a great pet. Um, as you can see, she's so affectionate. Um, she does something that some people find disgusting and some people, like me, find adorable. Um, when she's happy and she's purring and kneading, she drools a little bit. So uh, if she's sitting on you, uh, you might end up with a little wet spot. <laughs> um, um, but it's just another sign that she's just so relaxed and so happy and content. Um, she did come in um, with three other cats, so she has previously lived with other animals. So if you were going to make her a second, third um, cat, or um, she's going to be your first cat, but you're interested in adding another in the future, um, she would be um, okay with that. Although we want to make sure everyone understands that when you're adding um, new um, furry family members to your house, you do want to make sure that you're doing proper integrations with them um, slowly, regardless of their species or, or things like that, whether it's cat to cat, dog to dog, dog to cat, um, guinea pig to, <laughs> to cat, all of those things. You want to make sure you're really being cautious and making sure that they're comfortable with each other and supervising them until you feel that they are going to be able to get along and be um, kind of around each other in the house. Um, other things that we know about uh, Moon Pie, she um, is afraid of loud noises. A lot of the cats that we've seen on the show today have um, felt that um, as well. Um, she's friendly, she's calm, she's able to handle um, her. They say that she's very independent, um, that she does love toys, which is good because if she loves toys, it's gonna be easy for her um, to get active um, and kind of help her shed a few pounds as well as monitoring her diet. Uh, Moon Pie was brought in through no fault of her own. Um, her owner passed away, and unfortunately, um, their, the, her owner's family members kind of had as many animals as they could handle. Um, so they did the right thing by bringing them here to us. Um, and Moon Pie is now on the adoption floor, and hopefully she'll find a new forever home um, where she'll be just as loved. 
Um, if you um, want to make this um, super affectionate <laughs> older girl part of your family, stop in and visit with her. Um, a lot of our overweight cats tend to stick around a little bit longer because people are concerned about um, health issues and um, managing that. Um, you know, it, it is a little bit more work up front, but the rewards are uh, much larger, especially with a cat that is as sweet as Moon Pie. Um, so just, you know, talk to your vet. Um, think about how you could manage that, and if you think that you can um, provide her with the best life um, for the rest of her life, do stop in and visit with Moon Pie. Our last guest today is Esme, and she is one of our longest shelter residents. She arrived at the end of February, and she's still here and now in May looking for her forever home. Um, Esme is uh, 10 years old, and she is one of, again, our overweight cats. There are a lot of great things about Esme, but there are a lot of things that kind of make her not stand out, which is part of the reason why um, she's probably still here. Um, again, just as we talked about with Moon Pie, some people don't want to take on the overweight cats because they don't think that they can manage it. Um, and then you can see um, she has some thinning hair. Um, when she gets really stressed, uh, Esme likes to overgroom herself. Um, so hopefully in a, a nice, relaxed, forever home, um, that won't be a problem for her anymore and it'll all kind of grow back and then she'll be um, just, you know, back to her ordinary self. Um, and then again, the fact that she's an older cat can, can kind of extend their stay a little bit. And then she has the added thing of she's a black cat. Now, um, it's not necessarily about superstitions that keep black cats here. It's just there's less that makes them stand out, especially in the dark stainless steel cages that we have. Um, they can kind of blend in and people just don't see them. Um, and Esme is not the only black cat on the adoption floor. A lot of our longer time residents are actually black cats right now. Um, Randall is there, um, as well as um, Skye uh, and Oscar, who were here last week on the show, and then our blind cat, Palico. Um, lots of um, black cats on the, on the adoption floor right now that really just um, need a little uh, help to stand out and make people um, think about, hey, what if this is going to be the perfect pet for me? Uh, Esme is kind of an independent girl. Um, she kind of wants to do what she wants to do. Um, she likes attention on her terms, um, which is a, a typical thing for a cat, but also an older cat. You know, she's, she's kind of set in her ways, which is also one of the good things. But if you're not into, you know, independent cats, then maybe that's not going to be um, the best thing for you. Um, she was brought here because um, she didn't get along with the dog in the house. Um, not an uncommon thing. Um, you know, people get a new puppy or a new dog and their cat's not a fan of it. And then they um, decide that they want to keep the puppy or the dog and then they bring their cats to the shelter. Um, so it's an unfortunate thing, um, but um, hopefully we'll be able to find Esme a home where it'll be her home for the rest of her life. Um, she's okay with kids. She kind of tolerates them. Um, depends on the age, just like I, I've said with some of um, the other animals on the show today, Harley, you know, young kids can make a lot of loud noises, fast movements. Um, they might not pay attention to the body language and what the animals are trying to tell them. Um, so it makes the animals a little bit nervous. Um, otherwise, you know, Esme's a great cat. She just needs somebody who's going to take her for who she is and not try to make her something that she's not. Um, if you're interested in making Esme part of your family, uh, again, you can stop by the shelter and visit with her. Uh, our kennel hours are Monday, uh, Tuesday, and Friday from 10 to 5, uh, Wednesdays and Thursdays from 12 to 8, and Saturdays from 10 to 4. That's it for this week's show. We hope that you enjoyed meeting some of the adoptable animals here at Frederick County Animal Control. Um, we hope that you will tune in next week where we introduce you to uh, some more of those animals. And we also hope that you'll attend our open house that's coming up Memorial Day weekend. That's going to be May 26th. That's a Saturday. Um, the, kennel will be, uh, the kennels will be open. Um, the shelter will be doing our normal thing. Um, but we'll also have some extra activities, some free food, um, all that type of fun stuff for the kids. Um, it's going to be from 10 to 2 on that day um, here at the shelter. We hope that you'll stop by and join us. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.